everyone was like placement 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 and i was like i at some point even if i get into consulting i probably want to start my own outfit because in their journeys of those people after a few years they want to start something of their own you know the world revolves around data a lot of times what you believe is so biased because of your own experience and environment that's very far from the reality of several other people i am not above average in anything at all and every day i'm just looking at my hair trying to tidy it trying to cover up the bald patch and realizing that just so many insecurities at different places just coming together becoming this massive ball which is hitting my self worth inside of me when you take action on something that you fear and it shows some success when you consistently take action that fuels you to face your fears even more in life ahead 2015 when i just graduated from the college and went to take my first job like every first time jobbers i was really excited at that job and uh, i was generally curious about a lot of things and uh, i was not only focused on doing my work but also trying to see what else i can do at my work what difference i can make in people uh, that i was working with so this one time i went to an event and i saw this interesting concept called goodies box what that essentially is is whenever you feel like appreciating someone you just write a note and then drop it on the box and on a designated day you just open that box and read those uh, you know appreciation in front of everyone so you really feel good about yourself um and you kind of inculcate the culture of appreciation um so when i implemented that one day my um department had noticed that and she went like hey what is that and who implemented this and to cut the long story short i ended up being appreciated at our town hall the point of the story is often times we feel that hey you know what this is not my role this is only what i'm supposed to do and we really don't do things that are beyond our kras and uh, in today's episode i invited sarthak ahuja who is a startup and business consultant uh, who is also a content creator and i love his content because his perspectives are completely different how you can really develop the sense of ownership and prepare for the future like you must know the way ai and machine learning is taking over people's jobs and how you can really be in top 1% how you can really prepare for the future how do you generate curiosity how do you go beyond what you are expected to do and make a real difference this episode is something that you will walk back by learning a lot and also we talk about sathak's and mine um bold story what did we learn from our boldness uh, it's insightful you will enjoy this conversation Let's get started. Welcome back inside another episode of the Inspiring Talk podcast. I'm super excited to be joined by Sarthak Ahuja. Sarthak, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited to be here this morning. Awesome. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed having this offline conversation with you and I'm so excited on what uh our audience is going to take from this conversation because um when i came across your reels on instagram i said hey here's this one guy whose content like i want to like binge listen and binge watch and consume because the analogies that you draw are really really beautiful like i injured the one where you said uh you know good products are, are like you know temples where you engage like five senses i can't recommend people uh, to go and check his instagram uh but Uh, I want to start off this conversation from uh, what we are discussing offline about the average half life of the, any career today is three four years, uh, and at the pace with which the thing things are changing, it's you know uh, it's very important for us to upscale and you know um, sort of learn as much as we can uh, to be to stay relevant, right? so um why don't you share about like why do you think it's important for you not only to focus on one thing but then start looking at other things sure so i think this is this is something i've said uh, multiple times not just not just to people at my office uh not just my partners in business but even any occasion i've got to speak with people um this was a realization that happened sometime last year 
uh, when I started making content, it's been about a year and a half. And the journey started um, from the perspective that one, as a business consultant, I would feel every day the the questions that a lot of founders ask me were very repetitive. Hmm. You know, the same kind of FAQs come to you daily. Uh, and I felt there was a way to productize it, where I can productize my answer. And anyone sends me that question, I can just send them that short video saying, here is the answer to your question. That's why the whole journey of creating content really started. Um, and whatever were the FAQs I could think of, mm. I just kept every day making a short video of not over one to two minutes, mm. giving the answer in brief and keeping it ready also for my team to consume and learn from. Mm. Uh, but what I realized about three months into the process and I create content daily, it's mm. a part of a daily ritual, um, is after three months or almost 90 videos down, I felt like I had no other insight to offer mm. or I did not really have any other question that I could think of that comes to me from clients uh, which I answer routinely. And suddenly I felt that, uh, okay, if all my 10 years of experience, uh, being a CA, helping companies with tax, helping them with business consulting, be it related to product and customer insight and marketing and finance, could be brought down to just 90 to 100 insights. And I don't have anything more to share. That for any expert is a very heart-wrenching realization mm. that Make you feel like how less I know <laughs> exactly that that uh, I don't know more than 100 insights and I call myself an expert so I think that day there was a switch that kind of you know went on in my mind which said that okay I need to come up with at least one new insight every day and I feel that when you think of output you know how much value can I add to others it takes at least 10 units of input to come up with one unit of output. Mm. Which made me realize that if I want one unique insight which is beneficial to business owners around the country, if not the world, I will have to do at least 10 times input myself. And I think that really started my self-learning journey or I would say it was a catalyst in pushing it or propelling it much faster. Mm. Um, and that was the point I also realized that you know, whatever you know today, mm. the world is changing so rapidly. Yeah. Uh, be it crypto, tech, product, consumer behavior, that um, in the next five years, people will be engaging with businesses and with each other in a completely different way. Yeah. And if you've not upskilled yourself daily towards it, you will be absolutely replaceable and irrelevant, mm. which is why it's important now more than ever for not just businesses, but also for individuals. To have a LND department or an LND function, not for business, but for oneself. Mm. Which is what brings us to, you know, learning and development on a daily basis is so important. Mm. Mm. And I think for a lot of us, learning stops at college. While we are getting, we are being bombarded with a lot of information on a day-to-day -day basis on our social media and so on and so forth. But like active learning where we have an intention to learn where we say that, okay, you know what? I want to learn about this thing in the next few things, like the structured learning that we have in our school or colleges. Like that's a whole other conversation on, uh, you know, I love the structure part of it. Like, you know, the other uh, aspect of what do we learn is something that, you know, is debatable, but the structure is something that we can definitely pick from, you know, our college and school on P picking a topic and then creating a structure around it and then, you know, uh, and going about learning. For most of us, it stops after the college, right? And one of the things that you talk a lot about it is entrepreneurship. But I want to focus on intrapreneurship. The, the people, not everybody needs to be an entrepreneur. If I'm happy doing job, then, you know, and I don't need to take the pressure of being an entrepreneur. However, I can be the best at my job and show the skills at my job, right? So for somebody, like, what are some of the traits that you have seen in the people who are intrapreneurs, people who have done exceptionally well, even in their jobs uh, and, you know, as working professionals? 
I mean, this kind, this this kind of reminds me of this one uh, class I took back at ISP. Mm. Uh, it was called Strategic Talent Management. Mm. Okay, and um, I remember our professor shared this very interesting stat with us, which said that uh, world over, an employer makes seven times the amount of money from an employee's work mm. than what he pays him. Mm. which if you were to also reverse it it probably comes to that uh, you know 15% of an employee of a business's cost should be employee cost mm. but when you switch it over mm. you know it also makes you realize that if you are an employee if you are adding seven times value to your employer of what you know, you're being paid of mm. what you are being paid if you are adding just seven times value you are an average employee mm. so for you to really like add value to your employer you need to do much more than seven times and i would say uh, as in business they say that your product should add 10x value to your consumer that what they pay for the product or the service they should be able to monetarily or in in the context of time saved or you know effort saved get 10 times the value as an employee you need to add 10 times the value to your employer if you are not doing that you are probably just being an average employee mm. so the debate about whether the employer should be taking that much work from you or not is a completely different aspect because an employer is going to compare to other businesses and mm. the risk in entrepreneurship is much higher the risk of failure is higher employees get a fixed pay on a monthly basis so i feel yeah 10 times value to be added uh if the moment a person realizes that and starts looking at how much value am i adding on a daily basis that can help a person become a better entrepreneur mm. and i think a lot of times when you realize okay how do i add more value yeah that is also the switch that makes you realize that okay i probably need to upskill a little more hmm. so coming from the finance industry i'd say that you know an accountant could possibly feel that my job is to just record all accounting entries uh, in such a manner that the output is correct yeah but for him to upskill and learn to study those mis reports better compare it to industry benchmarks hmm. and then come up with the insight that we are underperforming in this area where we need to improve mm. by pulling one two or three levers mm. that is what requires extra effort mm. on an ongoing basis mm. and that's where an accountant can really add value to mm. the employer or the yeah. business yeah i think i really love this uh, you know this is this is really great metrics for you to look at like you know if i'm giving creating 7x value then i'm average like 10x value then maybe i'm above average or i'm being better right and and to me for anybody to think that way i think that comes from the sense of ownership that you need to own what you are doing and feel like this is my work and not just that you know i'm an employee and i don't care like i just do whatever i want to do right and and for somebody who's looking at growing in their career or you know whatever way in their learning or expertise or career you are you need to take that ownership and you need to step up and say that hey you know what i want to take this responsibility right and uh, and 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 this is something that nobody can give you like you know ownership is something that nobody can ignite in you right but that is something that uh, you know that comes from within correct but but i feel there is a way to probably ignite it mm. in a person mm. and of course it comes from within yeah. but i feel a lot of times like when i speak with people who are much younger than me or even people who are older than me and this is what people call like a quarter life crisis or a mid life crisis where they feel that what have i been doing all my life and i probably wasn't meant for this or i'm not finding fulfillment um i think what is happening is people lose that ignition or that drive mm. to further on keep adding value in what they're doing yeah um which is also because things are changing so fast yeah and people haven't upskilled at the same level yeah so i feel for anyone who's younger who doesn't know what do i really want to do in my life it starts with just experimenting with so many things mm. you know 
these days you can learn marketing online you can learn product development online there are so many no code tools that you can actually become a tech developer online true you can learn finance online um and it's that curiosity in a person mm. that i just want to learn how this functions which drives experimentation or gathering knowledge on different aspects mm. and then whatever you start enjoying you begin to naturally without consciously thinking about it doubling down on it and as you double down on it over a period of time you know it's success fuels much better than failure mm. so you know when you see some success in learning something or finding an insight it fuels you to keep going deeper and deeper and i feel that's how careers are probably meant to be mm. made it's mm. all driven on a first principles level from a person's curiosity mm. and do you think that curiosity is something that we can learn i think uh, it, you know how how they say that there are several types of luck right and it would be unfair for us to say that we guys talking here don't come from places of privilege mm. because the first kind of luck you really get in your life is the family and yeah. the environment that you're born in and for people who've probably been not born into as giving or nurturing as environments mm. for them the fight has probably been more not from the point of view of what is it that i want to do but from the perspective of i need to do something to earn money and then rise up the self actualization pyramid and be yeah. like okay now what do i really want to do mm. so i feel when we say curiosity we also have to be conscious of the fact that we're probably speaking of an environment or a country where basic needs of people are taken care of mm. and the reason why these conversations are now so much more relevant today even in a country like india is because over the years the nation has also developed in a way that a lot of people have actually and our parents and the prior generations two generations have worked so hard yeah to give us the basics yeah that now we can actually think of nurturing our curiosities because our environments have enabled it mm. so even now if we're not trying to be curious or not trying to be learning about new things we're actually doing a disservice to the prior two generations who ensured that we have the basics in place mm. Mm. and i you know you talk about accent curiosity on your uh in tech talk maybe we can dive a little deeper into that and what do you mean when you say accent curiosity sure so so as you mentioned that i think uh, it's important that i kind of give people context on yeah. on this and i explain that through a story so i had a close friend back in uh, college in undergrad and i would travel in the metro every day with him and we'd go to we'd go to college together and come back and that year he won the top quizzing competitions in the country mm. all of them wow so imagine he was competing with people who were several years older to him uh, not as many younger to him but winning most national level quizzes i was just amazed at what he was able to do so i asked him this one day that how is it that you're so good at quizzing how is it that you know so much about everything and he said you know what um, it's now been about 8 years i would uh, after school go back home um open wikipedia and just read wikipedia daily for 2 hours so i was like how do you read wikipedia i i couldn't understand the concept and he said so uh, say for example and that day i remember specifically we were discussing nike as a brand and you know nike shoes because that year also there was one design which was quite a rage so he said like we've been discussing nike so i'll go today i'll type nike I'll be reading about Nike and I'll see the founder is Phil Knight so I'll click on Phil Knight's name I'll start reading about Phil Knight and then I'll know that he grew up in Oregon so I'll start reading about Oregon and then that's also where Osho Rajneesh uh, you know built his empire from so I'll I'll hop on to Osho Rajneesh so he's like that's how like you know from one topic to the other I'm diving deep into all of them and whatever interests me then which is related I hop on to that topic so the learning here is that you and i can be curious about 10000 things yeah but do we really take action on that curiosity to learn about how that is functioning and mm. go deeper or do we let that curiosity be so 
so superficial that mm-hmm. it just dies out in a few minutes of you not taking action mm-hmm. so i think um, there's this uh, gentleman who asked uh, you know a, a managing partner at sequoia that most vc funds um are able to showcase great results only in like one decade or you know a five year period that too dependent on very few bets that they've taken on startups mm. so eventually it's a game of luck yeah so sequoia has probably been in existence for over 40 years now so for decades how is it that it's always outperformed other investors in this space and they said that because we're we're all me always paranoid mm. about not knowing enough mm. and i think that paranoia comes from your curiosity poking you yeah. that you don't know this yeah if you don't know this or if you don't take action on knowing this you will become irrelevant because someone else will know this and they will make money off of that mm. or gain fulfillment or whatever is your goal you know out of that and you will be left behind because you don't know this um so not saying that you have to always be paranoid yeah. but i think as they say certain amount of pressure is always good for you to perform well mm. so it's just knowing that that balanced amount of pressure when your mind is always in that i need to learn otherwise i'll be irrelevant or mm. what will i do it's just about not being passive about okay i've made this much money and i'm getting this much income and it's yeah. about constantly pushing yourself to learn Hmm. I think it's beautifully, you know, summarized. And one of the things, uh, what we, you know, what we do here at Wine is often, you know, push people to find something interesting to explore beyond their scope of work. Like, for instance, our video editor will say that, "Hey, you are only editable editing the videos, but I think what you should also look at is learn about storytelling, which is very, you know." relevant for a video editor to also know how to tell the story or Correct. how to you know how to like even if somebody like let's say we are having this conversation and somebody needs to take out the piece out of it and then you know curate this into a beautifully done 30 second reel you need to have that knack of storytelling else you will just cut like 12 minute 30 second and you know 13 minute and then boom you just have 30 second thing but it might not be very you know Correct. gripping right you need, you need to have that knack of storytelling okay now i know the storytelling bit then what else should i know then probably you should look at uh, you know how the distribution of this piece of content that i'm creating work or how the conceptualizing i think one um, for for me personally one uh, you know way to and particularly for the people at jobs one way to really learn about and this is something that comes from my uh, work at pharma company i was in analytical research which means the product has been developed by the research and development team and that would come for us to create the testing methodology methods and you know analytical methods right which means the step before the product came to us is the development you know the product development uh, research team right so take look one step before it came to your table what is it that that's happening there you try and learn about that and then one step after you have done your job like for instance after we have done that then it would go to manufacturing site where the knowledge transfer would happen right and how things work there then maybe you have now from what you just do you have expanded one step back and you have gone one step ahead and once you have learned enough about that maybe take one further step maybe after you know it's in the manufacturing side the probably it goes to the packaging and then it will go to the marketing right there are, you can go as further as you can and similarly in the big like before research then there was somebody who did a market study and said that probably this is the product that we should work on then there's a, like a research and then somebody said that okay can we try creating this product then comes into the product development then comes to the research and then you know analytical research then after this is done then you know like then you keep on expanding till the time you understand entire thing about that business and right? you can take one step at a time and that has really helped me understand whatever i work and that's the framework that i use so is there any framework that you particularly use absolutely i think that that what i really like about this conversation is that we're picking up frameworks from business mm. and applying them to individuals and actually seeing how if an individual were to apply the same frameworks of business growth yeah 
to their own lives how they can become such better human beings yeah. um like for example what you just mentioned when when companies have to grow beyond a point it's it's about you know either vertical integration or horizontal expansion and all your uh mergers and acquisitions and all growth strategies essentially revolve around okay if i want to optimize on my purchase cost maybe i should acquire the vendor who sells to me and you know i will be able to then save on that additional margin true or what if i were to own distribution myself i will save on the margin which my distributors are earning mm-hmm. so you know that's how that's how most business expansion works but uh, you asked about frameworks in my life i think if i were to talk of one mantra which is probably helped me all through uh, at every stage be it in school or college or later even in my career right now it's just facing your fears hmm. um so i remember uh, i was horrible at public speaking hmm. like so much so that um, you know my uh, i remember my in in class 12th my class teacher asked me to represent our section for intersection debate and while it was too small a competition to really worry about but uh, somehow i was just uh, you know so perturbed by the idea that i had to write down the entire debate learn it by heart because mm-hmm. it's almost like you know how people uh, narrate the hanuman chalisa that if you if you kind of mess up it one line you will have to go all over again because you've mugged it up mm. um so i think that really embarrassed me about myself to a great degree that i was so afraid mm. of talking in public that at one point i decided that i have to face this fear and i have to uh, try and go speaking mm. to people and i start teaching um basic concepts to uh, children from government schools because what i realized was you don't fear speaking in public you fear the judgment that people will make on your yeah. ability or inability to do something true so when say you start with an audience where at least that fear is not present mm. it gives you an opportunity to practice it again and again and slowly elevate your audience mm. so you know there's a process to it another thing was i remember um i was one of the editors of the school magazine mm. and i was pushing people that year asking for them to write for the magazine but at the end of the year when the chance for me to write an editorial came uh i didn't want to write anything because again i was scared i thought people are going to be like what a pathetically written piece and why is this guy been made an editor because he doesn't even know how to write mm. and uh, there was something i did which which i was embarrassed of and i felt really apologetic about for a very long time thereafter i one of my friends he had written a piece and i said listen you are so comfortable writing uh, you know different articles can i just take this piece that you've written put it in my name and publish it in the magazine and i did that that year so mm. that year uh, the piece that went in my name was actually written by a friend and i kind of held that inside of me for a very long time and i mm. felt really bad about it and one point in undergrad uh, i said i need to overcome this fear of writing so i decided to start a blog and it was called uh, my life is a jalebi mm. so it was a humor blog okay. and uh, it's almost like think malgudi days mm-hmm. for a punjabi kid north indian kid in the 90s uh. so i would write a lot about you know my relationship with my grandparents my friends the kind of candies uh, we would all be crazy about and you know the kind of tv shows i would watch and what movie was my favorite what cartoon character was my favorite i would write a lot about nostalgia of the 90s from mm. my life and i started that exercise just to see that mm. i didn't want people to uh judge me mm. for what i write so i just want to put it out on public display mm. i kept doing it consistently for for about 6 7 years mm. and i think it has about 150 essays 150 essays down um, i remember in 2015 it got the best humor blog of india award wow so i think that one point really reiterated in my life that when you take action on something that you fear you know and it shows some success when you consistently take action that fuels you to face your fears even more in life ahead Mm-hmm. which is why i feel that as a framework is really important for people to try and take 
small successes out of so that they can kind of double down on it in mm. the future mm. talking about fears um you know i want to touch upon this um because this is something that you mentioned uh, before we started recording right the fear of losing something and uh, um you know and you have your own journey and i want you to share uh and i think this also connects back to what we discussed on learning bit and experimenting and going one one extra step what stops us really is the fear of probably thinking that i'm probably not good enough to be going to my manager and say that i also want that extra responsibility or whatever that is right um so and it stems from your self belief and you know the self acceptance that you have about and the, the self image that you have about yourself right um so you know share with us about your sort of experience of and this is something that i can absolutely relate with um going bald and what letting go of that whatever remaining hair you had on your head yeah uh you know taught you about uh life that we can probably learn and implement and i'll share my bit after you you know share yours yeah. <laughs> so i think uh while it sounds very uh superficial to to people and it may seem very uh inconsequential to a lot for someone who's probably not gone through it yeah but i think i started losing my hair um back at the age of 17 i was probably in 11th grade 12th grade and i remember writing the pre board exams when i was doing that i could see strands of hair like just falling on the answer sheet oh i was just brushing it off yeah. and uh, writing my exams i think at that time i thought it's probably the stress of the board exams which is leading to this but soon after i realized that it continued to fall and i started going to dermatologists and started talking to doctors and they recommended a bunch of things you know topical solutions that you should apply serums and this thing called minoxidil and probably eat this and eat that and eat iron tablets and what not and i think my biggest fear at that time was that um, you know i i did my schooling from a boy school so i was like my entire opportunity to date women mm-hmm. is going to start after i get done with schooling yeah and if at this point it's going to give me the biggest hit at a point which is probably my strength which is my hairstyle mm. um you know how am i going to go ahead in life and and woo women and you know date women <laughs> and get into relationships because i was all out you know like after a boy school i was like man i'm going to college it's coed uh but uh, <laughs> I remember a doctor gave me some minoxidil solution which I would continue to apply and it worked for about 2 3 years um after which you know the effect kind of keeps waning off and you start losing hair and you've got a receding hairline and all and I remember this was around 2016 I had joined ISB um and I saw a few pictures from the orientation week and I saw there was a bald patch behind my head and um uh, I started losing hair I was probably in a in a state of denial but that's when it really hit me that oh man you're half bald mm. and i was like damn um i look easily at least 7 8 years older than i actually am and if i don't find this face attractive how will any other person find this attractive and you know to add to that um isb is such a phenomenal place of such smart people who were put together in one campus and locked in there that for one year you're literally interacting with some of the biggest alpha people in the country mm. smartest people in the country and while i was always academically one of the brightest in the cohorts i would find myself there was one place where i felt damn i'm not smart at all i'm not even average um I got a B negative in my statistics paper which was term 1. Suddenly I'm like below average as a student. I have no self worth because of the way I'm looking. Um I feel I'm not smart enough. I feel I'm a misfit. People are so much smarter, so much better looking. I was never good at sports. Suddenly I see people playing football and tennis and swimming and better than me at literally everything. and my self worth took such a dip because i was like i am i am not above average in anything at all mm. um and every day i'm just 
looking at my hair trying to tidy it trying to cover up the bald patch and realizing that just so many insecurities at different places just coming together becoming this massive ball which is hitting my self worth inside of me uh, that i want to get rid of and very jokingly this one day i just decided that okay i'm going to shave my head with a friend and you know he he took this shearing machine and just sheared me and made me go bald and i was laughing about it and i went for a shower immediately after and i came back and i looked at myself in the mirror and i literally just broke down that very moment and i started crying and i was like what do i even look like like what has happened to me hmm. how can anyone find this face attractive when i myself don't have enough love for myself hmm. um and i remember easily for about 4 uh, or 5 months i would cry myself to sleep on some days worrying about that i don't have friends that i can relate to on other days thinking i'm not smart enough third days thinking i'm not good looking enough fourth days thinking that physically i'm not the most fit i can't play sports and i think it it took a fair bit of looking at myself like that daily for about 6 months mm. which brought me that acceptance i felt that i should shift my focus on things that i can possibly control mm. and if i'm not smart um that's okay i can at least focus on learning whatever i can mm. so suddenly my focus shifted from do i want a big placement from isb or do i want this much marks to i want to learn something i don't already know mm. so while i done my ca cs cma these kind of courses in finance and accounting prior to that i decided to take up a um my my expertise or my masters in in marketing and leadership at isb and i thought i'm going to study all case studies related to this and even though at term 7 and 8 where students are placed and they don't uh, uh they don't study as much because you know placements are done they want to relax and party towards the end of the mba i would read all my cases before class underline make pointers not because i was trying to impress a professor or something but because my mind has switched to i need to learn and be better i'm mm. below average that's absolutely okay mm. and i think that mental switch from what is within my control to what is in my control very powerful is very powerful and uh, gradually i started loving the way i looked mm. because my mental switch changed to what is it that i can control through and because consciously i was making efforts towards that suddenly all these voices gradually started weaning off and you know started shutting down mm. and started liking myself in all other aspects too mm. so even though i wasn't the best of swimmer i decided at least i can do 10000 steps every day and you know take care of my health and that's doable and why not mm. so i started focusing on that and because i achieved that over a long period of time that gave me a certain feeling of success and what not mm. and now it's it's probably been about 6 years um i've sported this look in i i call it you know how there is a crew cut and there is a mushroom cut and whatever i think this is the brazilian cut really <laughs> and i think it's uh, hot looking like yeah i can very well afford a, a hair transplant but i would uh-huh. rather never do it because mm-hmm. i think for me this is a constant reminder that this is something you feared in your life for probably about 5 years and shaving that hair off knowing that now what is there to fear fear yeah. now what is there to lose nothing focus on things that you can control that was such a powerful switch in my life that i rather keep it this way every day as a constant reminder that face your fears and focus on things that you can control so beautifully put and thank you so much for sharing that because i know you haven't shared this before yeah. and uh, um and you know i can so relate with that um because for me it was one was for me it was a little different my own experience because i was losing the hair but i was least bothered about it i'm like i don't give a damn like if i'm losing hair then so what's the big deal with it i mean there's no uh, no issue with that right but for me it was external you know sort of 
poke that a lot of people would give oh look you are losing your hair what are you doing about it you should go and do this and that and what not and for the longest period of time like you said i was in denial i was like oh you keep on talking i didn't give a damn like i'm okay with it um it's okay and uh, and then when you know the thought of okay i think i should just get rid of it and then go completely bald that scared me uh you know uh, like you said the 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 fear of losing something i don't know what and you know i tried <laughs> you know using the apps to create a mock up of what i would look like if i you know went bald and so on and so forth and one day like you said i just got rid of it and uh, and then i realized you know how much time efforts and energy we put in things which you know i felt relieved when i did that i felt relieved um and i'm like okay like you said now what else is there to fear like you know this is something that i felt uh you know is is such a big thing in my life now it's almost nothing because you know i don't even care about it like it's 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 that that's me and uh, you know after that i i have felt this upsoar of self confidence that i you know that i started feeling that hey you know what like you know i own this this is part of me and like you said you know people said that hey you know even today like people said that hey i think you should consider uh you know plant transplant and so on and so forth i'm like i'm never going to do that why would i want to force something uh and you know i would i would just leave with it because um you know um, it's it's the reminder for me for you it's a reminder of facing your fear for me it's a reminder of uh you know the journey that i went from uh you know uh journey of self love and acceptance uh and owning who i am right and that's that's been such a beautiful, absolutely beautiful beautiful journey uh you know uh, for me there so i think uh, the lesson from whatever we are, we are sharing here is for some of us it could be physical insecurity for some of us it could be emotional or social or whatever that insecurity or the fear that we have is just that face it and get past it and don't spend too much time you know thinking about things just get down with it and move on correct so i think how it also relates to mm-hmm. business very consciously is there a output metrics and input metrics mm-hmm. so basically if a business focuses on you know we want this much revenue mm-hmm. in the next year or we want this much profit so we want this much market share well you can't have it because what you're focused on is something which is outside of your control mm what we help businesses with is identifying input metrics what yeah. are the levers which can help you reach that yeah and your focus in business should only be on achieving those input metrics consistently because if you attach yourself to something which is beyond your you control, control true and you keep beating yourself about not being able to achieve it or mm. reach it then it's just a futile attempt because you're crying over something which you can't even do anything about mm. you know just understanding those input metrics and even in business or your personal life focusing on just that helps make all the difference it's something as simple as you know reading someone would want to learn more about a particular subject but if they think that how can i know so much that i'll become a cfo tomorrow of my company or cmo mm. it's just such an intimidating thought True. that you will never get started Mm. but when you focus on just reading one article every day or just starting with one book and finishing off it it may be one month two months or whatever and just doing that daily you won't even realize how soon you'll get to that point mm i think that's a great uh, mental switch to have you know attach yourself to and i think this is part with gita also says that you know focus on karma and Not absolutely on the outcome you know what is you're going to get and i think uh, and that also like you said it's less intimidating it doesn't put a lot of pressure you are doing it for the fun of it not for the outcome of it correct correct yeah yeah great um so now you know we were talking about how do you really potentially become someone who who really consistently learns and take the responsibilities and intrapreneur you know intrapreneur entrepreneur yeah did i get that one right yeah <laughs> you did you did 
<laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. So uh, you know, how do you become one? And now let's, you know, and there was this one conversation I had with uh, you know Varun Maya, uh, who runs this company called Avalon Scenes, and uh, you know, and that conversation I was scared because um, he said that AI is going to take over and is going to take ninety nine percent of the jobs. of the people we don't know when that's going to happen but you know we can see that happening with the rapid uh, you know pace of things right so how does one one thing is learning you take the extra responsibilities and so on and so forth so are there any ways other than that that where people can actually become irreplaceable like do you really focus on one topic and go deep into this or you like pick the other topics is there any any insight that you want to share on that so see if you were to uh... ask a business owner you know um you want to hire a cfo mm. there are two options you have yeah one is someone who comes with 20 years of experience uh running the finance and accounts function in a related company who could solve this problem the other guy comes with just 7 years of experience but l- literally like one third the experience of the other guy mm. but he knows a little bit about performance marketing also he knows a little bit about no code also he knows a little bit about product development as well and of course he he comes from 7 years of experience of finance which one would you pick and um, i ran this as a poll on my social media channels and mm-hmm. most people picked the latter with lesser years of experience in that function but having more uh, exposure to multiple to multiple avenues and functions also and i think the reason that works for most people who want to hire is because they do realize that beyond a point skills in a particular function only add as much mm-hmm. but for you to really take on a leadership role mm-hmm. you need exposure to multiple domains so that you can think how all of them come together and take more holistic decisions for the business's growth mm-hmm. and i think the same thing applies in our lives as well you know as they say that um, you know life is almost like you need to balance between three things which is uh, time health and money mm. but at any point people will be able to have two but not the third so you know uh, when you are young you don't have money but you have time, time. and you have health mm. when you are hustling in your 20s and your 30s and your beginning to make money uh you still have health on your side and you have money but you don't have the time mm. and when you grow older uh you have money and, and time but you don't have health mm. so the real beauty is in balancing mm. all of them together mm. which is even in skills the real beauty is understanding what more can you add in your skill set so i remember i was um you know hosting and moderating this one cfo uh, summit uh, a couple of weeks ago in bangalore where cfos of some of the uh, biggest companies were put together it was uh, um, so all of us were in a room and my job was to really ask them about how tech is disrupting their business and their function as a cfo mm. and the conversations turned so beautiful because i realized those guys as cfos also were so aware of what new technology is coming into their function mm. and maybe that's the reason why they rose up to the ranks of cfos because they didn't understand it as a function of their learning mm. so i think uh, more people realize that they need to have they need to go deep in one function but also wide on several others is because one function can get automated first hmm. by ai or technology but if you also have a wider lens yeah you will be able to see where else can i continue to add value to the business and the world and then maybe continue to just be on your own fulfillment journey of adding value to other people and making money in the process hmm daily startups and coffee yeah <laughs> daily coffee and startup sorry yeah so so yeah that's daily that's coffee book. and yeah. uh, startup fundraising that yeah. my book yeah yeah how did that come about so uh how did that come about is a 
so in business you always say that you know um, you have to figure out what is the gap in the market uh, what is it that the consumer wants and giving it to them so um, in about a year of me making content um, two of the most common questions i would get in my insta dms and also on linkedin one was can you help me with startup fundraising because of course i work as an investment banker so that's my job the second was Uh, can you recommend a book where i can learn everything that you're talking about in your content mm. and i recommend a lot of books um on my social media profile so on my instagram there's this one highlight it says read mm. and there are easily about 30 40 books that i've recommended which i've read over the past uh, one year uh, so but i would never be able to recommend just one book mm. which would collate the knowledge from all of them for a first time entrepreneur mm. so i felt that was a need in the market answering those two questions together in one resource um so i thought okay whatever is this knowledge base let's try and convert it into a book there are a lot of books on startup fundraising most of them very safe to say 95% or more of them have been written by foreign authors mm. or even authors of indian origin but who are based out of the us in mm. silicon valley mm. so a lot of the perspective is very us silicon valley based mm. um and it's not written for indian founders so i feel a lot of indian case studies indian context how is the law different in india how is the process different in india uh, you have a lot of blogs mm. answering those questions yeah. but more than half of them are also incorrect mm. so i felt it was about time that someone puts it together and um, this one publisher got in touch with me said you know would you want to write a book i said absolutely you've yeah. taken the words out of my mouth yeah. i've been thinking about it myself he said i can help you expedite the process um i'll get you a writer you put together the table of contents and you give us the content and we will make it easy to transcribe it for you so he got me this one uh, young girl who's just completed her undergrad in psychology mm-hmm. had no background in finance nothing in entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and uh, every alternate day for 2 hours um during my jog and walk after i close the table of contents i would just for 2 hours tell her about one topic mm. in the book and explain it to her uh and she would understand which i thought was uh, quite an achievement because the idea was to explain it to people who have no background mm. so we could do that consistently over a 3 month period and uh, yeah she was kind enough to transcribe the entire recording of what i was saying and sending it to me then we would edit it mm. i would add tables and processes and flow charts and things like that so in about 4 months we could uh, close the entire book right from writing to editing to cover design and everything and we published it and we released it i think sometime in um, in the end of october i think around it was around navratras that we did launch that book um and yeah we've sold out the first batch so the second batch is now going in print nice and hopefully it should be out soon and yeah it's it's been amazing super stuff i'll link that up in the description of this episode and uh for anyone interested in learning about startups fundraising and beyond that um you know sarthak has got his vast experience in working with a lot of startups helping them raise the fund um and there is a lot that people can take from like he said from the indian context which is really really important so uh congratulations on your book what is the number one wrong belief that you held for the longest period of time about yourself incorrect belief okay so um i remember this taking this one um, you know test back at isb uh, almost everyone was signing up for it and it was i think et economic times uh, organizes this some leadership test okay so everyone was taking it i also took it and i didn't get shortlisted for the next round and everyone else did and when i was analyzing my answers i realized that everyone else was probably more data focused than i was i was more consumer insight and belief and this and that focused and that's what was reflecting in my answers and i realized that you know the world revolves around data a lot of times what you believe is 
so biased because of your own experience and environment that's very far from the reality of several other people which is why before you make any belief firm mm. either about yourself or the world or how the world functions it's important to look at data mm. which is fair and correct and hopefully free from all biases i think that's when i realized that okay if data is important for business data is also important for one own self mm. that was the time i built an excel sheet where i said uh, okay i'm going to track every day things that i should improve about myself mm. so my waking up before a particular time am i going to the gym how much cardio am i doing how much weight training am i doing i will measure all of these things i will measure my learning did i read at least 50 pages of a book on professional development did i do at least 1 hour of reading on new technologies product etc etc so those are the kind of things i started plugging in an excel sheet and i would mark myself as green amber or red on a daily basis so i think when i started doing that i realized like i could clearly see the improvement in several aspects of my life immediately mm. so i think a lot of times people believe oh i'm improving this year i've done this which i had not done last year or this year i've achieved this but only when you track it daily mm. can you really see are you improving daily or not and mm. i think daily is such an important aspect yeah because consistent effort that compounds is very very different and it's very similar to business you know there are businesses who look at uh, monthly mis mm. what was our last month sales and what was last month's profits and i'm like no you've lost the game the moment you're looking at monthly mis because you're looking at your numbers only 12 times a year mm. think of the business which is looking at it on a weekly basis yeah. they're looking at it 52 times a year yeah 40 times more than you are mm. the difference that mental switch can make so i feel just um, recording and analyzing data daily basis even about your own self mm. can be a very big switch really powerful how do you build that consistency so to build that consistency it's important to first uh, if you've read this book called atomic habits mm. you know by james clear yeah. and um, when i read it i realized how a lot of it i was doing intuitively but it put a framework to it which even reinforced that belief further in me so you have to start with something which is small and doable mm. if you if you are probably like 100 kg and want you want to get down to 70 losing 30 kg is very intimidating a thought but if you say okay what is it that i can do daily can i walk these many steps every day it's not putting too much pressure on me if you like playing racket sports can i play badminton every day or can i do something that you enjoy which is easily doable daily mm. so for a lot of people who probably want to get on a diet you know just cutting sugar mm. or if you can't cut sugar just cutting down on say two cups of coffee where you take your sugar from four coming down to two can also be a minor switch mm. so the idea is start with one thing do it consistently over say a month then add one more small mm. little bit do that also consistently for a month so keep adding one little thing on a monthly basis when you do that you are just working on one small habit because the other one mm. since you've been doing it for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days prior it's already become a habit and a part of your daily routine yeah so i think the idea that i try to follow in everything that i'm trying to improve on is just take a little one little easily doable thing like even for content mm. uh we're not a content company yeah we are into finance business consulting and i felt okay content is my learning system it's it's also content marketing for our business so we're not going to focus on how much time it takes to edit we're not going to focus on how much time it takes to record i'm just going to pick up my iphone speak out an insight immediately post it online and be done mm. the entire process if it takes more than 20 minutes of my day it's eating out time from my main business or mm. what i want to do so i was like the process has to be in less than 20 only then is it sustainable for me mm. so i think that switch has really helped us keep going now with about almost 600 videos wow yeah wow. 
that's really powerful sartak you have been a black sheep in some you know um extent going to isp and saying that i'm not going to take uh you know placements uh and uh, you know um and i'm sure there are you know and the problem of being a black sheep sometimes is you deal with this feeling that hey you know what i'm doing something but i don't think people are people around me you know understanding you mentioned about after you you know term getting over everybody got placed and they were parting and stuff like that you were studying and saying that am i doing the right thing that everybody is parting is this even the right thing to do or you know uh, am i making a mistake and you know that kind of doubt sort of cripples in because w- the environment that you're surrounded with is heading in direction a and you are headed in some other direction and you don't know if you are doing the right thing or not right and so for anybody who is right now listening or watching to us who is going through that phase of nobody un- around me understands and am i doing the right thing uh is there any message uh, or lesson from your own experience of being that person that you want to pass on okay so i think that is a part of my personality mm. added up because of several smaller instances or experiences and if i were to uh, go back i remember um my parents telling me that in i was studying for ca final and they said listen everyone takes coaching for this and it's not easy um what all subjects do you think you need coaching for do you want to sign up and let's in time let's sign up for those classes so that it's not too late that you say oh i don't understand this and i'm flunking my exams i said you know what like because others take coaching doesn't mean i just want to sign up for it i first want to see where is it that i'm facing trouble in understanding and then go ahead and do it so for me i think a lot of times in life uh, my parents trying to tell me oh the world is doing this why don't you do this has just been like okay let me figure it out like i'm not going to take that on face mm-hmm. value mm-hmm. so at that time i remember i was really struggling with this a uh, paper called strategic financial management and even uh, this one on operations research and i ordered one book and i studied from it and i couldn't understand jack shit um, second resource i tried was slightly easier and i said let me just uh, try and look for some resources online i remember in operations research i was searching for that subject on youtube mm. and i found this one class like a two and a half hour class recording mm. by a professor at iit madras who was explaining that subject i watched that video and i just understood the entire thing and i was like wow like i'm so blown away and thankful uh that this video exists and could teach me about it and then for whatever chapter i wouldn't understand or whatever topic i realized okay i can do this i can search for it online and try and find something that will explain it to me mm. and for everything i literally found something online yeah so i told my parents i don't need coaching I'm, i think i can find solutions myself i can figure this out uh, let me attempt this by myself and they said cool mm. uh so i went ahead and did it and i mean i'd say it would be unfair for me to say uh, that the credit goes to me i think i was very very blessed and lucky Uh, to have done that but when i kind of passed my ca final exams um, a lot of newspapers kind of uh, published this news article about me about being possibly the youngest indian at that time to have completed four degrees by the age of 23 which was ca cs cma and an undergrad in finance all without any coaching so i think that was an added kicker um uh, that that told me that i can learn or do something even though the world is taking coaching that's okay so i think then when i went to isb everyone was like placement 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 and i was like i at some point even if i get into consulting i probably want to start my own outfit because in their journeys of those people after a few years they want to start something of their own yeah so i remember having a lot of conversations with professors and the dean and you know the dean said that listen if you really want to do it uh 4 5 years into it you may probably not have the courage to 
give up and do it yourself because at that time you'll probably be married you'll have responsibility for your family and it keeps getting harder and harder you know for people to give up so he's like you know what if you really want to try it out right now why don't you go ahead and do it and let me give you that option that if you opt, opt out of placements this year and you try it out for a year and doesn't work out you can come back and sit in the placement process next year and i'm so thankful to the dean to give me that opportunity and that option because i was willing to openly speak about it so much and you know try and search for an answer that just that safety net give me the comfort to okay let's jump in and let's see if we can do this so i feel safety nets are also found when you go out searching knocking enough doors so the first step is just uh, going around asking and not fearing that if you ask you look stupid i think that's what has probably yeah helped me so far mm mm-hmm. amazing this has been such a great conversation uh, sarthak i have two more questions um, the first one if we were to redo this all over again what were uh, what are those three things that you would have done differently or started early or um, maybe you wish you learned earlier i think one the moment i realized i need to track data hmm. of business and my own self had i started doing that much earlier I think I I would have definitely skyrocketed I would have liked to believe I mean while of course I wouldn't want to change anything about my life mm. these are certain learnings where if others can probably take yeah. um that would be one just measuring data mm. uh second adding value for the world everyone's focused on what can I get from this job what can I get from this relationship what can I get from this environment this experience if you focus on what can you add to the other person and is it 10x hmm yeah or what you're getting yeah that switch the sooner you make hmm. starts opening so many more opportunities for you i think that's something i would have started and uh, third i again it's linked to the second i wish i had started uh, creating content much earlier <laughs> and that's because um, that was my way to give to entrepreneurs yeah knowledge yeah about what i knew which they would pay so much to consultants and you know yeah. professionals to get answers to and i was giving it away because i wanted people easy access to that information i think had i started doing that much earlier there were so many more lives i would have impacted uh touched and impacted so mm-hmm. yeah yeah imagine you are standing on the stadium and this is the largest stadium in the world and there are millions and millions of people in that eagerly and passionately waiting to listen to you you've been given only 1 minute of the time to share the most important lesson that you have learned in your life what would be your message i think uh, if we come down to fundamentals and first principles everything comes down to you have control over your mind and on your senses so you know how even in the gita there's this one visual which was uh, you know shri krishna was the one who was manning the rath the chariot for arjun and there are five horses and says that these five horses are the five senses mm-hmm. anyone who's gotten control over all these will be able to achieve everything that they possibly want and a lot of times that achievement may just be the realization that i was just running after things which are inconsequential in life because it's just that self control or that self realization uh you know that you've got everything in that satisfaction because as they say the the paradox of success or wealth is also the more you keep getting it the more dissatisfied you are about not having more of it so i think which also stems down to not having control over your sense of desire right 
So I feel if people can just learn to uh, control that. I remember having this conversation with a friend uh, recently, and he said that um, he heard this one billionaire talk on a podcast, mm. who said that the past eight years I've had the same item for breakfast. Yeah. Daily, yeah, you've mm. heard of that, mm, yeah. and uh, the reason is that he wants to kill his urge to satisfy his taste. Mm. Uh, he's like, if I want nutrition, I'm getting it. Mm. It's taste pushes you to have things which are unhealthy, do things which you should not be doing in life, and if a person can just control that, um, so much of a difference it can really make in their life in how they. optimize and prioritize things so taste is just one sense if you can have control over your desires and your senses i mean unbeatable this has been such a phenomenal conversation sarthak thank you so much for taking this time out and uh, sharing your insights and wisdom with us thank you bijay pleasure is all mine and i i really hope this adds some value to people because i mean i don't think of myself as very wise to be honest So for you calling it wisdom, I think I'd give credit to uh, my look, which is similar to that of a monk. <laughs> so all credit goes there, but yeah. two monks. Glad <laughs> two monks. Two monks. <laughs> Absolutely. So <laughs> glad it added value and it really yeah. did to me as well, Ram. So two thankful you without, had me here. Without old monk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. It's thank been you. Great conversation. Thank you. Awesome. How was it? Good. Yeah. Good fun. <laughs>